I had the privilege a few months ago of speaking over in Tennessee, and uh, I'm very honored that uh, we can be a part of Jewish ministries. Uh, one of the first things we did when we started this church 42 years ago, we took on a Jewish ministry. And the reason we did that, we claimed Genesis chapter 12. Uh, God said, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. And I just happen to believe that when we help God's people, God will help us. And uh, God has got a group of people over there in the Middle East and scattered around the world that uh, will never pass away as a nation. Uh, God said, as long as there's a moon and sun and stars, there'll be a Jewish nation. And she's budding. She is budding. In Romans 9, you have the Jew past. Romans 10, the Jew present. Romans 11, the Jew future. You tie that together, you see that God has his hand on that nation. They gave us our Savior. They gave us our Bible, basically. God has used them. And God has planted them. And God has used them and continues to use them and will use them. And we're glad any time that we can have a part in Jewish ministry. And uh, got a dear friend here tonight. He's uh, with uh, the Hope of Israel ministry, Dr. Doug Thompson. And they kindly spun off of the Hope of Israel uh, and kind of an affiliate, kind of like we have Return America. And uh, he's going around and he's building that. And we're glad he could be with us tonight. Uh, he, he, how many years do you pastor, Doug? Twelve years. Okay. All total? Thirty-eight years, all total. Uh, so he's uh, not a novice. And he's coming tonight to talk to us and uh, speak to us. Come on, brother. We're glad. Let's welcome him tonight to our service. Thank you, Pastor. I'm so honored to be here. You're such a blessing. Thank the Lord for his kindness and grace. I uh, just want to introduce myself right quick so you'd understand who I am. I got saved in 1984, November the 18th, 945 on a Sunday morning. I made the preacher late for church. My wife got saved earlier on Halloween night that year, right in the middle of a fight. I shouldn't be here, but by the grace of God. Fourth born in the family of 11, best one of all of them, to be honest with you. Uh, to hear my mama say it when she's only talking to me, she's convinced me of that. But uh, it's been a marvelous journey for me, and I'm grateful to God. Immediately after I got saved, I had a barber shop, barber styling shop, had six people working for us, a house, two other businesses. When I got saved in December of that year, on the second, God called me to preach at four o'clock in the morning. Less than six months from being called and surrendered, I gave away a house, car, walked away from $500 a day, gave away two businesses, and I went to Bible college set under Dr. Harold Seitler. And I don't regret a bit of that. People thought I would starve to death. My family thought I went crazy. Uh, but the best thing that ever happened to me was the day they got born again. And uh, God has been so good to me. And I bless his holy name. Forty-five states I've been privileged to preach in. And uh, I guess over a million miles, tent meetings, revival meetings, and planted three churches since I've been saved by the grace of God. But Dr. Daniel Freed, K. Daniel Freed, a Messianic Jew. I've known him for, I don't know, 28 years. And he, God birthed in his heart the hope of Israel, Baptist mission. 
and they have labored and they have worked and they've labored for all these 25 plus years getting the gospel to the Jewish people, uh, printing Bibles in their language and sneaking them in the country, making sure they have that. But back in December, I believe back in 2012, God dealt with his heart about reaching out and helping Israel on the state side, meaning he helped them spiritually to get the gospel. We, we have so much anti-Semitism throughout our nation and across the world and we have politicians all over our country that are anti-Jew, anti-God, and they're against everything that you and I stand for. Just uh, yesterday coming down here, I stopped at Asheville. There's a pastor there, a little community outside of Asheville. This is how our nation gets taken away from us. In that little township, three of the town council members said they wanted prayer no more in their meetings. A local pastor like your pastor stood up and said, no, look, it's been long-standing practice that we had prayer. They scoffed at him, they laughed at him, they mocked at him and said, take your prayer and put it back in a closet. That's Asheville about a week ago. And we're being eroded on every hand. And the reason why we have been so afraid, we, the Baptist people, have been so taught that you don't get involved in a political sense. You have to take half your Bible and throw it away because Christians throughout the course of this Bible, God has used them to influence political things in their life. And so I thank God for your pastor. Thank you for the bus workers. What a blessing from God. And look at this great facility God give you. And you're a part of that. When you support your man of God, you are a part of everything God lets him do. And his steadfastness and his strength and you standing with him and by the good grace of God has made a difference in North Carolina, and aren't you thankful for that? Amen. So that's, uh, Brother Free started what is known as Baptist Zionist Political Affairs Committee. Thus began Beasy Pack. It is the only one of its kind that we as Bible-believing Baptists can petition our government with local politicians that would be on school boards, be in mayorships, be a part of what's happening, that stand for our Baptist heritage and stand with the nation of Israel to make a difference. We're in a mess we're in because we have stayed out of it. Amen. And if we continue to do that, then it's going to be crumbled right in front of our eyes and I cannot bear the thought of what was bought and paid for by the blood of our ancestors and the generation of people. I just talked to a Marine uh, two days ago, spent four tours over in Fallujah. He got out of the Marine Corps because of the corruption Amen, that had been brought on by this current administration, 22, um, no, 24 and a half years, want to be a career man, and said, I can't take it no more. And so they're stepping out, and we need each other. Amen. Could you imagine what kind of voice would be heard from Bible-believing Baptists if we yoke together Amen. for the cause of a political sense that gives us an arm to operate through the ministry of what God put on Dr. Uh, Daniel Freed's heart, Beasy Pack. We're there to influence politicians. We have a manifesto that they must sign 
standing with Israel. You've heard of this two-state solution, right? That is the greatest insult to any Jew that you ever talked to. That'd be like somebody telling you and me that all these people that come into our country illegal have a right to have their flag, their national anthem, they can have their own law, they can have their own land. No, they come here not to annihilate. They come to assimilate if they come right. Amen. And they need to sing our anthem, learn our language, and we don't have to bow to what they were. Amen. And we're not giving up what was bought and paid for by our ancestors. And I ain't backing down. I'm not backing up. I'm going to stand by the mercy and grace of God. And uh, your pastor and his, his friends that stand with him help all these younger pastors across our nation. And if we could stand as God's people, I'm sick of what I'm seeing. I am, I'm eyeball deep of sick of what I'm seeing. And it hurts me to know that we have been told lies and we backed up because we don't want to offend somebody. We don't want to, want to take a stand. We don't want the, I guess, the stigma of being loud and boisterous and right. Amen. Paul said, I may be rude in speech, but on the other breath, he said, but I'm right. <laughs> yeah. It takes boldness and correctness and courage to get something done. So, uh, with that being said, I, I would like to uh, take a moment. I don't want to take no more than 30 minutes tonight. I know you got to work, and I appreciate, Pastor, you letting me be here. And it's 734, and I don't want to keep you late tonight. Although, if I wanted to, I could. Amen. I could have twins right here, right now, all right? But I, I, I want to respect you working hard, and you've been so faithful to be at the house of God with your pastor. And there's a lot of things going on in your life, too. But this is important to my heart. I love America. I love the Jew. And I love this state of North Carolina. And I'm sick of what I've been seeing. And if you indulge me just a few moments, I'll take you to the book of 1 Samuel. And I'll read one verse for the sake of time. And you're all familiar with the story. And verse number 29, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? 1 Samuel 17 and verse number 29. I'll read that to you again. David said, what have I now done? You realize that he's speaking to his own family. And he says to them, is there not a cause? I want you to be seated. Father, we love you. Please help me tonight and use me to glorify your name and magnify the good name of Jesus. We'll bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. And for Jesus' sake, you can be seated. Now, in this chapter, we understand David to be a lad. David is following the will of his father to go check on his brethren that have been intimidated, insulted, isolated, and frustrated so bad that they listen to one by the name of Goliath, challenge them, and defy the army of the living God. And when David came over the hill, brought all of those refreshments to his brethren, they in turn looked at him and disdained him and said, who's keeping those little sheep? I know the notice in your heart. Why you come? You come to watch this battle. No, he came at the will of his father. And oh, by the way, 
in order to salvage and rescue that state, that state of Israel now, God used a shepherd. He did not use trained warriors. They were in foxholes hiding. They had backed down and backed up, and the king was even scared to death. Sound like the administration we got now. And they would not stand, they would not stand up, and they would not defend. They was on an apologetic tour. Learned that from his former boss, by the way. And as you look into this story, it was passion in the heart of that young shepherd when he heard that giant disdaining them and defying the armies of God, he said, who is this guy? That's right. What's going to happen to the man that takes his head off? Amen. And so the rest of them said, David, why, well, you're just a rut. You can't handle this job. You don't have any training. And so David looked at that crowd and he said, it ain't about the training, honey. It's not about how big. It's how big the God is of the man. Amen. And so David uh, began to maneuver his life through all of this. And I believe that he said in verse number 29 out of his heart, is there not a cause? Now what would make him, brethren, Stand against his own brothers. Stand up against the king, who, by the way, tried to get him, get people bribed to do the job. He said, you can be a part of my family. I'll let you marry my daughter. Nobody took him up. Nobody wanted her. I guess she must have been bad, ugly looking. I don't know. <laughs> but she could have had a bad hair day. I don't know. But they wouldn't take him up on the offer. But David comes along and he has a desire and passion in his heart and has a fight down in his soul. That's what's missing today. People have no desire to fight. They want to capitulate. They want to turn over. They want to lay down. Brethren, this thing's not easy. When you look at Goliath in this chapter, the story goes this way. If you win, we'll become your slave. But if we win, we'll take everything you got. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Whether we like it or not, our government is not for us. Amen. As much as they hate Donald J. Trump and they going after him, they got their eyes set on this church. They got their eyes set on your freedom, your liberty, and they want to take it all away. But it takes somebody with a David-like spirit and desire to say, number one, I want to fight for the founding of my family. Amen. When you think about the founding of America, it is so miraculous, just about like how God took Abraham and Sarah and birthed a nation out of them. It took a miracle. It took mighty hand of God to produce that nation of Israel out of somebody that was past age having children and they couldn't do it on their own. It took a divine act of God. Amen. Did you know back in the founding of our great nation that the first commander in chief and the first general of our army by the name of George Washington, did you know he was baptized by a Baptist preacher? <laughs> so therefore, in the founding of our nation, the history of Baptists has been there since the founding. And I don't care what infidels think or say, this nation was birthed out of desire to have freedom of religion that we could worship our God without the hand of tyranny telling us where we, go, where we can and when we can't and where we could go. So I think about the founding. Did you, did you know the Continental Army was in bad shape financially? Did you know that infamous picture of George Washington bowing uh, there under that tree. You know what he said to be doing? Praying that somehow the God of heaven 
would finance the army and finance their cause and finance the war. Did you know a Jew by the name of Solomon loaned them six hundred thousand dollars? You know, your pastor taught you this, and you know that he loaned that money. $600,000 back in the founding of our country? Can you imagine how much money that must have been out of the pocket of that Jew to say, wait a minute, I'm going to help in the cause of freedom and liberty. And as he done that, ladies and gentlemen, the number I want you to keep hearing is 600000 You want to know how many words from Genesis 1 all the way through the last verse and the last word of the book of Moses, the writings of Moses, the Pentateuch? You want to know how many words is in there, letters? 600,000 letters. From Genesis 1 to the closing of Deuteronomy, 600,000. Why would that be so significant? Just hang on a minute. In the founding of our country, there was $600,000 loaned to us by a Jew. Now, when the Jew is under the tyranny of one by the name of Hitler, six million are being slaughtered. Don't you understand it was the great generation and the burden of the fig tree that's in our New Testament that God used America and God used our allies to set the nation of Israel free. And when they went to those concentration camps and got them liberated and got a freedom to them, the heart of our soldiers melt and all of the heartache that they seen happened during war. But you know what happened just a few days later? Here comes a Baptist by the name of J. Frank Norris. He goes rolling over to Israel and tries to influence the policy of the UN and the people over there in the Middle East to let Israel have their nation. It was called Palestine back in that day. And when all of that was taking place, did you realize that there was a president that was sitting in the office that was an anti-Zionist? Roosevelt said, I am not going to let that happen. He joined hands with King Shaw and making up an agreement that he would not ratify the UN resolution that would allow Israel to become a nation. Now, in April, he wrote a letter back in April of 1948 to King Shaw. I'm on your side. Everything's all right. Just a few days later, out of nowhere, the sovereignty of God shows up. He gets sick and dies. The sovereign hand of God used a Jew to fund America for her freedom and her liberty. Now, when an American has an opportunity, he has an anti-Jew spirit. God said, I can take care of that. I'll move him out of the way. Just so happened, there's a man by the name of Harry Truman that was vice president. Just so happened, God let him ascend to the highest office in the land and became vice president. And as in his vice presidency, he moves up to being president, and everybody on his staff says, if you ratify that UN resolution, you're going to cause war, war three. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, he consulted with J. Frank Norris. The letters were written. He shut the door and wouldn't speak to anybody. But out of his heart, he knew that them, listen now, there in that land was 600,000 Jews that needed a flag and needed a nation. Amen. And God allowed Harry Truman to ascend to a microphone, and he declared that Israel would become a sovereign nation, and thus America helped Israel, Israel helped America, and when we had number 45, Amen. Donald J. Trump, 
Everybody said Hillary's a shoe in and she's going to win. It was all odds against Donald J. Trump. I'm going to tell you something. The sovereignty of God stepped in one more time. And God put him in that office. And while he was in the office, he was a Jew-loving president. He moved the embassy over to Jerusalem and even Israel's enemy so-called clapped and said, it's about time. God said, I'll bless them that bless thee and I'll curse them that curse of thee. Now, when you think about our founding, I'm going to close in just a minute. David had a cause, preacher, to stand for our founding. Now, I told y'all I was fourth born of 11. Outside in the hallway is my banner. On that banner, you will see a picture of a man in a sailor suit. That man was 16 and a half years old, lied about his age, went into the U.S. Navy, and fought in the Southern Pacific. Got shot at. I'm telling you, the kamikazes come by. He told me one day how a bomb went through his arm on that 20-millimeter cannon on the starboard side of the USS Hancock, that aircraft carrier, and said, I should have died then. But God didn't let him die because <laughs> he knew his fourth born <laughs> was going to be a preacher. And every day of my life, Pastor, my dad, World War II Navy vet, said to me, this November, son, I got to go vote. When it comes time for you and these kids to vote, you better vote. I don't know what you're talking about, Dad, as I'm growing up, time after time. He said, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. It was my detail that when it come time for burial, I had to dress up, get down by the morgue. My sailor friends that died in battle beside me, they dressed them up, they cleaned them up. It was my job to carry them out to the plank. And he said, every time I'd carry them out to the plank, I wonder why it wasn't me. Why it wasn't me. And he said when they put that flag over them and lifted play taps and they fell over the side of that ship, we kept on sailing. He said, I've thought about that could have been me. And I said, it's worth it. Freedom is worth it. Amen. He said, son, don't ever let them take your flag. Yes. Amen. Son, don't you ever... Let them take your freedom. Amen. I don't care who you vote for, just go vote. And he would tell me that with tears running down his face. David fought for his family. You know what we're doing today? You've got missionaries from that concept and the birth of this church to help the Jew. <laughs> What a blessing. Thank you, man of God. And now God's give you another arm that you can, a glove that you can slip your arm in and your hand in. You can get involved politically. That way we can work hand and hand spiritually to rescue the Jew. But she needs help. She needs help in the political arena. They despise her. They hate her. Anybody in America that's a Bible-believing Baptist ought to love the Jewish nation. Amen. They loan 600000 so we can fly that flag. What do you think George Washington thought when that Jew came rolling over and said, I'll just take care of that? 
God said, I've always had a way. And he's always used a Jew because he said that. He said, in these shall all the nations in the earth be blessed. I know that's the gospel, but you want to know why America's here? Not because we're good, because he's good. And we're here because of the gospel. We send the gospel around the world. And we've been involved in, in keeping people out of hell for years. Did you know in my home state, Kentucky, I lived in the county of one name, uh, Muhlenberg? Amen, brother. Gabriel Muhlenberg. That's who our county's named after. And did you know that in our governor's offices in the state of Kentucky, there's a man by the name of uh, Barkley? Barkley became governor. Barkley became vice president. And they wanted Mr. Barkley to become uh, president of the United States. He said, no, thank you. I've got a higher calling than becoming a president. He said, I want to get involved in the Bible Association. <laughs> and he wanted to get Bibles in the hands of Americans and around the world. So now we have history of our country our nation, our states, even here in North Carolina. And look at our family's brethren. I don't know if you understand how bad a shape things are in, but I'm sure your man of God has taught you many times. It's so bad where I'm at that they're now letting kids identify as cats. in the public school with my tax money. They're so bad if that child wants to identify as a cat and they call that individual's name, that child will answer with meow. And it's so bad if the, if the teacher don't meow back, the teacher gets fired. Laughable, right? Sad. It's so bad that they request for litter boxes to be put in the bathrooms. That's Kentucky, by the way. It ain't just happening in Kentucky, honey. Did you know in Chicago, the biggest children's hospital has yoked up with uh, the Illinois school teachers and started giving perverted things to them to indoctrinate little kids and said, we'll take care of the surgery. Would you ever have thought that we'd ever get to that day? Your kids have to face it. I preached this one day in a church in Kentucky. The kids got to laughing and got mad at me because I brought it up. I said, it's true, ain't it? They said, yes. And you want to know why we get there if the foundation be destroyed? That's right, brother. It's destroyed because we have sat back and been spectators and not participators. And we got to. It's not fun. It's not fun. I have got kicked off the radio for calling the mayor out. I mean, I got fired from a radio station and I was there giving my time free. <laughs> and it was my second cousin that owned the blooming thing. But they bowed to the pressure of that mayor. And the reason why I couldn't stand up and fight that crowd, I'm by myself. I don't have a team of lawyers. They got a bunch of lawyers, but I sure made them nervous, honey. Amen. I went to their city council members, their little meeting the next time, and I brought my laptop and, and I brought my phone and my iPad and I set stuff up. He's sweating like you won't believe. I knew him since I was a kid. Friends with my father-in-law. 
crooked as the day is long. And anybody got something they want to put on the agenda? <laughs> I stood up and he started to cry. And I sat back down because the police officer was going to get honored. I thought, I ain't going to fight in front of this guy today. But when that meeting was over, that, that mayor chased me to the door. Preacher Thompson, Preacher Thompson, Preacher Thompson, Preacher Thompson. I said, who are you? <laughs> he said, I'm the mayor. I said, oh, how's it feel to have on your record in heaven that you got a Baptist preacher fired from a radio station? You touched something you should never touch. He's sweating and crying. Amen. I said, how's it feel to be on your record in this county to fire the only Baptist preacher from any radio station in this county? Does that feel pretty good? Come on. Will you forget my son? I gave you a long time ago. It ain't me you better worry about. It's God. Amen. I just kept on the walking. Can I take you out to lunch? No. <laughs> but we did have a set down. And it was so good I decided to run for judge executive of my county. <laughs> Reason why I didn't win, I didn't have $35,000 to spend. Thus, we need BZ Pack. $12 a month, you can be a member to help shape our country into what you love. Are you big enough? Well, we will after a while. Everything has to have a starting place. And I sure love to see God touch some hearts and help us. And if God would touch your heart, it's $12 a month to be a member. And got a beautiful hat out there we'll give you just for just because you're thinking of us, let you keep remembering Israel. And uh, here's another thing. We're, we're getting things fired up and going. Our e-magazine, we got state directors, we got uh, regional directors. Uh, I, got, I got a fellow now that's uh, deputy director, just took a church in North Carolina from Mississippi. He's right up here at Love Lady Baptist Church. And so we're growing. And by your help, we can get a lot of things done. And I sure appreciate your kindness and your help tonight and allowing me to be here. And uh, Pastor, thank you. Thank you so very much. I love you. Love you, buddy. Love you. Love you. Well, let's stand tonight with our heads bowed, our eyes closed. <clears throat> Our Lord said we're lights in this world, and he said we're salt. That's our job. Show the people who are walking in darkness the light, light of the gospel. Salt is a preservative. America needs to be preserved. Salt stings. You put salt in, in a sore, it'll sting. Truth sometimes stings, but that's what we need. And uh, we're going to have an invitation tonight. If you have a need in your life, whatever the Lord would be speaking to you about, I hope you'll come down tonight and get around the altar. Father, I want to thank you tonight. I want to thank you for David. Man who said, is there not a cause? And Lord, you know, for these years, we've tried here to say, yes, there is a cause. And we need to be involved. And I pray you'll help those in this auditorium tonight to continue to say, to say, we will stand. We will not waver. We will stand firm, firm on truth. So help us tonight as a church. Help us as individuals. Help us as a people. And should there be one here tonight, of course, that's never been saved, we would ask you deal with them. If there are those here tonight, uh, who have been saved, but they look at their life tonight and it's a mess. I pray you'll help them to come front and center and get it settled. Bless them this invitation, whatever the needs are, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing a stanza. If somebody else needs to come, would you come?